Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about Azure Service Retirements because Azure as a cloud service is evergreen. You get constant new types of services, enhancements to existing services. That also means over time, some of the old services, the old features do get retired. Now as a customer, it's critical to stay ahead of these retirements. So you're not scrambling at the last minute to move to something else. You're not being forced and automatically moved to some other service. So in this video, I wanna quickly look at the key actions you should be taking and the resources available to help you stay ahead of any Azure retirements. Now, the first place you wanna be going is the Azure Service Health Alerts. So if we jump over, what I can see here is I've gone to my help and support. So here, if I was just in the bottom of my screen, I can go and look at my various um, help and support options. Within help and support, you can see I'm looking at my health advisories. And straight away, it's saying, well, hey, look, there were two retirements here. But also what I could do is you have this add filter option and I can from here just say, hey, I wanna add a filter on the issue subtype and I could set it to retirements. So it's showing me the retirements that are impacting my specific set of resources. Here I've got just one subscription, but you could change that scope, you could change what I'm looking at. So what this has is this is the most comprehensive coverage. It will tell me the subscription or the tenant name. It will tell me the action to take. You can see it's linking to a particular tracking ID. And Service Health provide notifications at regular cadence. I think it's two years before, one year before, six months before, three months before, one month before, two weeks, one week. Now where it can, Sometimes things happen that are outside the control of Azure, such as maybe some partner service, but where possible, it will give me that notification. And obviously I can go and click and I could get more details about these. But it will not give me the impacted resources today for retirement notifications, but that is being worked on. If we look at mine, you can see, well, in my scenario, it's telling me about, well, there's a, a minimum TLS version that requires updating. It gives me the required actions I should be taking. And you're gonna see this across many, many different things because obviously I think by November 1st, we need everything to be moved to TLS 1.2. 1.1 and 1.0 really is not wanting to be used anymore. And that November 1st, 2025 has already been pushed back a year from when it was supposed to go away. Another big thing you want to pay attention to are the classic services, i.e. the Red Dog front end stuff, the pre-Azure Resource Manager. For example, classic storage accounts. They are all really past end of life, past supportability. I think that was August 2024. And you need to get on to an Azure Resource-based, a modern service. There are still huge numbers, thousands and thousands of customers using classic resources like classic storage accounts. So you really need to migrate asset because in the commercial cloud, there's just gonna be forced migration started because they don't want your services just being deleted or disabled. So the best thing they can do is get you to an Azure resource manager, but that still could have impact. So you as the customer, you wanna be in control of that. Now, obviously, because this is a service health alert, you can go and create service health alerts, which will trigger um, alert rules, which will trigger action groups. You can do various types of things. The other thing you can do because it's in service health, I can use the Azure resource graph. So if I was to jump over and I actually just go to resource graph explorer and I already saved this to save me having to type it out. Well, I could run against the service health resources type and get information here. So you'll see the two ones I already had. And because this is maintaining for 90 days, I'll see some of the previous ones it was giving me notification about as well. And again, I could get various detail, but 
Well, it still doesn't have those resource level details, which can be super useful. So what if I want those resource specific details? Well, now we have another option, which is the Azure Service Retirement Workbook. This is part of Azure Advisor in the workbooks area. And let's go and have a look at that. So if I go to Azure Advisor, it's down here. We have our workbooks area. And if I go into my workbook, you'll see we have our service retirement workbook. And as I select this, well, you'll see I've got a number of different areas available. One, it's really highlighting this whole TLS issue, and these will change over time of what it's focusing on. But I've got these three different views impacted services, all services, and retired services. And the default is this impacted service. Now, the goal of this is that it will cover nearly all services. That is not the case today. Say the coverage is not 100%. But over the next few months, you're going to see a very rapid growth in the services supported on this to really make it as comprehensive as possible. Now, the things that I'm about to show you here will also um, be servicing in Azure Advisor the reliability recommendations, and they're going to be introducing a retirement subcategory. Again, this is all stuff coming over the next couple of months, and you should see an alignment in what those things show. When it's completed, I'll add a little description so you know those things. I will note some things will not show in here. For example, if you think about open AI models and how quickly they get deprecated, I do not believe the plan is to actually show that in this workbook. But going back to this, what it is going to show me is under this impacted services, I can see all these different services being retired. But notice it's showing me the retirement date. That's great. But it's prioritizing by sort of when it's being retired and the importance of it. And it's showing me the number of resources that are actually impacted by this. So I can see, for example, it's warning me about storage accounts, support for TLS, um, applications, or oh, a classic insight. And I can see all these different retirements. But if I scroll down the actual page, now we get to this really interesting part. So this is showing me the specific resources for each of these retirements, the retirement date, and the exact resource. And it has the action to take to resolve this. So what's really powerful here is now I'm getting information on, yes, what's retiring, what's the service impacted, what I should do, and the specific resource that I need to go and take whatever action I need to on this. Uh, I could even be a little bit sneaky on this and I could edit the workbook if you want to poke around and find the exact Azure resource graph query it's finding to list each of those resources to maybe do your own thing. The other place you could look is if you go to the Azure Proactive uh, Resiliency Library, it also will kind of show you the different queries to run against the different types of resources if you just wanted to go and get a little bit more information there. So this is fantastic. This actually gives me for the covered services, the resource level details of those impacted services with those prioritized retirement dates. I can obviously filter and scope and do all those amazing things. I also have this option of showing all services. Now, if I think about the impacted services shows me the resources that are covered by those various retirement notifications. But as I said, the coverage is not 100%. So all services will show me all Azure retirements, even the ones where it will not show me the resources impact. And you'll notice there's a column here. Hey, is this available under the impacted resources view? So this includes both the ones that are covered and the ones that aren't but I can still get information on those retirements to go and learn, well, what should I be doing about those things? And I could go and search for a particular type of service 
and it was showing me, oh look, Classic. Do I need to go and look at details about Classic storage accounts? And it would then tell me the details of that's being retired. I need to go and get off of that type of resource. So super useful um, ability to go and see that. And then we have retired services. So this is obviously historical ones. These are ones that have already been retired uh, in the past. And that was it. I really just wanted to show you these resources. So maybe every couple of weeks, go and check out the, the service health, look for those retirements. I can go and jump into the retirements workbook to get resource level details for the covered services. And again, over the next couple of months, you're gonna see a much better alignment between those to make it even easier to track those things. Um, but that was it. I hope it's useful. Stay ahead of those retirements. Till next video, take care.